Dear Holy God, we thank you so much for bringing us here together. We thank you for this new Sabbath. We pray that you'll help us let go of all the, all the things that have happened for this week. It went by really fast. We, we just thank you for bringing us here together. We thank you for the messages that you're going to teach us tonight. We pray that you'll help us to absorb that and understand it. Um, both in the finishing off my presentation and um, doing Bell's presentation. We also like to pray that you'll help us all to be in unity and to remember it's the Sabbath, that we are to respect you, respect each other, and keep it holy. And we just uh, help us remember that because it's not always easy, especially when we're at our homes and, you know, we're not together at the church, you know, all dressed up. We Please help us to remember to keep it holy and to respect each other and you. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. And we pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my screen. So. I guess I need to turn off the video and not mute myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did that at the exact time I hit mute on me, and I thought, I know I didn't mute her. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, let's see. Um, that's the right screen. Okay. So you should be able to see the Ted Wilson and the Nature of Babylon. Correct? Got it. Yes. Great. Okay, so um, I'll just recap real quick as we go through because I'm fin and we're on page eight out of eleven, and um, uh, Bell has a presentation tonight. So um, for this presentation, this is number five, Ted Wilson and the Nature of Babylon. It was the Eden to Eden camp meeting, uh, make the right choice, and this was the last presentation that Elder Tess was doing, and the other four were mainly on uh, well were on feminism radical feminism, defining the differences between cultural, um, liberal, and radical feminism, and stating our position as um, prophetically being the closest to radical feminism. And then in this presentation, what she did was she kind of summarized that a little bit, um, but mostly what she wanted to make clear is that, uh, like she did in the feminism presentations, is that we need to look at, when we read Ellen White, look at her clearly through prophetic eyes, through new eyes, and see her position um, in, in the eyes of her present truth, not in ours, because if you look at her during her time, she was basically a radical feminist based on, you know, what was going around her, and so um, she wanted us to see that, and she also went to the split in radical feminism. And that is the, uh, the split is the, I know this term, <laughs> um, trans exclusionary radical feminists have split off from the trans inclusive radical feminists. And so the radical feminists have two, have a split. And um, most of it, uh, most of the people are inclusive, um, as far as I could uh, read um, that it, um, study. It was a smaller group that were uh, being exclusionary of the trans community, whereas in um, radical feminism has always been inclusive of everyone, wanting equal rights for everyone, not just um, women, but uh, women of color, women, you know, women in disabilities and, and people of disabilities, people of color, um, minorities, they, they fought for everyone's rights, not just their own. Um, but when it, when this split happened, the uh, trans exclusionary radical feminists were excluding the trans women from their group. Okay, and so that's what she uh, talked to talked about in these uh, finishing up in these paragraphs, and then we moved on to Adventism and the LGBTQIA plus community, uh, based on Ted Wilson's 
sermon from October 9th, 2021, where he, um, he went into detail about believing that the LGBTQIA plus community were an aberration and an aberration she defined as um, a going off from the norm. So I don't remember where that definition is, but it was it was departing from the norm. And um, let's see, and so she was saying that he wanted to compare and contrast, but he wasn't really comparing and contrasting because he was only uh, comparing what he wanted to compare. He wasn't contrasting. If he actually understood the apis bull, then he would understand what he was going on, um, what he was talking about. And um, he, he's not really understanding what he's talking about, especially since the I and the A of the LGBTQIA, um, you, you can't help, you know, you're, you're either born in, um, as a binary man or female, or you're you're born intersex, um, or you know you you're born um, having different sexual desires. Then, but but the intersex is where you're born with um, those um, different those physical characteristics of you know right here. Um, intersex people are individuals born with several characteristics, including chromosome patterns, gonads, and genitals, that according to the Office of the United Nations High Com Commissioner for Human Rights, do not typically fit the binary notions of the male-female body. And so, but he's calling LGBTQIA plus um, equal to Babylon. And so he's saying these people who are born this way, are sin, are, are sinners, and also the A, and the A for asexual is, asexual is a lack of sexual attraction to others or low, in, uh, low interest in sexual activity. And he's also saying people who have low interest in sex are sinners. And so he, um, Elder Tess believes that hopefully that it was um, just out of ignorance that he didn't do his homework before he said this thing. But um, even still, there was a, a, a lot of backlash um, from different communities. And she was explaining to us, you know, like what was wrong about it. And also going into their harvest, right? Okay, so, because um, if we remember correctly, okay, so here in on this line, she has, this is the priest line in black. In red is the line of the Levites. And you can see how they line up. So their, uh, their time of the end uh, for the Levites was 9-11. Their 9-11 was um, 2014. Their um, Sunday law was 2019. We're at our pantheon, right? And their, their shut door was at 2021 um, during um, our 2019, our canyon. I don't know if I said that right, but that's, that was when their shut door was, because like, right, so um, this was our shut door at 2019, theirs was at 2021. Right now they are in the harvest. We came into the movement prior to this shut door and they are coming into this movement after their shut door. So I think that's pretty much the summary. Um, is there anything I missed that needs to be re recounted before we move on? Just back on that point of the LGBTQIA. Yes. How we saw what she was referring to with the covenanted document, meaning that she was um, comparing this to right. covenanters, which are traced back to Calvinism and which is predestination. So because the intersex and the asexual have no choice, that is who they are. So basically, according to the way he put it out, um, they are predestined for destruction. Mm -hmm. No choice. Exactly. Is there any of this you think I should read over? 
or is that a good? That's okay. a very good summary uh, for me. It was a good summary. Okay. Okay. Thank you for adding that because I, I did miss that. And um, what she so the rest of this um, document, um, the Adventism plus LGBTQIA plus is based on, uh, like I said, Ted Wilson's sermon. And um, his sermon is based on the guidelines for the Seventh-day Adventist church in responding and to responding to changing cultural attitudes regarding homosexual and other alternative sexual practices. So, um, so these guidelines were voted in by the General Conference in 2014. And um, she wanted to state that at that time of the Sunday law, that would be 2014, was our Sunday law, um, that turning point between 2013 and 2014, uh, 2015, the uh, Adventist church submitted their position. Remember in 2014 is the Levites 9-11. And they say that homosexuality is inconsistent with the church's understanding of scriptural, scriptural teaching to admit into or maintain in membership persons practicing sexual behaviors incompatible with biblical teachings. And this is straight out of their, their guidelines, this whole uh, sentence right here. So there's um, much in those guidelines that is concerning, she says, so many parts that hint at that mindset of a covenant, covenanter, at least to me, I it felt like I was reading parts of a covenant document. And like um, Elaine said, that covenant, covenanters believed in predestination, which would mean that anybody who were born intersex and asexual were predestined for destruction because they're sin. To me, that is look what it looked like she was referring to. So I don't know, but that's what it looked like she's referring to. Right. And um, of course, we don't believe that, right? We believe that there is no gender and that so, and that this is not sin. You can't, it can't be sin to be born the way God created you. That would be like saying you're you're a sinner for having six toes. And just it's just ridiculous, and it's um what she said indefensible. Okay, so let's see. I'll go back and read this one. Uh, continuing to quote him, the Seventh Day Adventist Church has carefully studied these topics and has issued voted statements by representatives of the World Church that reflect the biblical view on human sexuality, including statements on homosexuality and transgenderism. I encourage you to read, okay, so remember when it says this, this is his statement. I encourage you to reread these biblical-based official statements, which are available on quite, um, the church's website. And this is uh, Elder Tess, and I want to remind us this is a world church, and some of those representatives of the Adventist leadership are speaking from countries such as Uganda and speaking with the authority of the Seventh-day Adventist leaders in the church, supporting and promoting legislation that also criminalizes this community, criminalizes by state, persecutes global church, global test. So she's saying it's a global church and it's a global test. Right, and, um, and Susan is reminding us that it's Calvinism. So Calvinism believes in predestination, and that's where this came from. For the covenant, covenanters were Calvinists, right? Where that's where they began as Calvinists. Is that true? The covenanters. Yeah. Yeah, it came out of that um, Calvinism then to John Knox, right? Then to right. John Knox and and the, the two covenants the, that we went through. We'll review those later. The, okay. The, the covenant the two documents, the, the covenants that they made. Right. Yeah. And okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's where we left off. And um, the key thread I want to pull from this, from his sermon, when he takes these LGBTQIA plus communities, I do think that some of this is ignorance rather than malicious, but what is ignorance is inexcusable. 
If he wants to speak with authority on this community, he should go to Wikipedia and find out what it means to be intersex. And then I think he really, he probably would not have included that but then he needs to consider if he doesn't even know what the acronym stands for, does he know, does he understand this community at all? So there's that point. Okay, and so he, Ted Wilson is saying that the LGBTQIA plus community um, is equal to Babylon, which is equal to the papacy. There's the, there is this, um, the fact that he connects this community to Babylon, and just to prove that he understands what Babylon is, we'll further read in his sermon. Quote, continuing in Revelation, we read in 14.8, uh, verse, um, and another angel followed saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This is the church down through the Middle Ages that continues today led by the papacy. So, so he knows what that means, right? This is, this is Ted Wilson saying this. This is the church down through the Middle Ages that continues today led by the papacy. So LGBTQIA+, this is Elder Tess speaking now. So LGBTQIA+, are the theoretical aberrations from Babylon and Babylon equals the papacy. I thought that this would be a good introduction to understanding the counterfeit. Okay. Now she's gonna go into the counterfeit or um, yeah, summarize it. So there have been four times that we have repeated and enlarged on the counterfeit, four key times. The first time was in uh, 2018 USA. So that would have been at the School of the Prophets. The second time was in early 2019. This was in Guadalupe. The third time was in December 2019 in Australia. The fourth was the school early 2020, and that was in Uganda. So I would mark those four times as the times where this subject has radically grown. And I have been worried that especially this Uganda school, so the, the Uganda school, um, Sorry, I just left my place. Okay, um, because it was a school and the others were camp meetings, it hasn't been much translated. I don't see that it has been watched much. Schools are a lot slower to watch and I've never seen what was taught there repeated in English. I don't know if other languages have and I'm not asking people to go back and watch it. There's too much from May last year to now, but I also don't want it to be lost. I just make a note that Elder um, um, Elaine had uh, done a presentation from that, the first presentation from Uganda the week before this, and the second presentation she was doing it the same exact day that Elder Tess was doing this presentation. So Elder Tess had not seen that we had done it yet. And um, so if, um, so for you guys' this benefit, you, you have, we have gone through the Uganda presentations and- um, Yeah, and the notes, are, the notes are posted too. And the notes are posted. Yeah. So those were really helpful. Yeah, so just the notes are posted on the website. Just a correction, I know that you didn't mean it that way, but you started to say Elder Tess and then you said Elaine. So I know right, right. Clear, Elaine is not. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Cause I, I started to say uh, Elder and then I got, and I, wait. No. We're talking about, yeah, I know. Right, right. So sorry, because I, I didn't pause it long recorded. enough. <laughs> I apologize. No, I, I knew I knew what you did. It's just because it's recorded. I wanted to make sure that was. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, sister, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I got myself all confused. Okay. So at about, at about um, the time I am to finish, I have finished my introduction to the camp meeting which was meant to be about the counterfeit, um, to take elder, um, shoot, I'm gonna just say it again. Okay, <laughs> Ted Wilson's not an elder either. <laughs> He's a pastor. So um, to take Ted Wilson to task for calling Babylon the papacy and get them thinking that this LGBTQIA plus subject is connected to Babylon. Our understanding of counterfeit has really refined. So I'm not asking people to go back and watch from the school, at some stage, 
soon, I would like to condense that into a camp meeting format and put in place what we know so far, because it really becomes an incredible thought in all that we have learned ever since May last year, where in that time we covered Adventism, modern Israel, and Protestantism. If we just understand Protestantism, the daughter, we know the mother can never birth this LGBTQIA plus community. What I want to do is add the mother. So in the contents, context of the increase of knowledge, we can have all three sets of our reform lines, Adventism, Protestantism, and Catholicism. Maybe we'll do that next time. And then maybe we'll do China. <laughs> She's still trying to get back to China. Um, okay, and remember this presentation was done in October of 2021. And I don't think we've gone back to that, have we, since then? Do you, does anybody recall? Uh, going back to what she was saying, going back to this, the information from the camp meeting and the counterfeit, uh, just maybe touched on a little bit. I can't recall. You're talking about the Uganda ones? What are you talking about? Because um, she says right here, um, yeah, she's talking about Uganda there, I think. So I'm not asking people well, to go back. She's and talking back. about going back and uh, redoing, uh, refining the counterfeit oh. meeting, not just Uganda, but um, because of, she's, she was talking about all of the okay. where she went to the counterfeit. Um, has she gone back to the, the counterfeit and, and gone through Adventism, uh, Protestantism, and Catholicism since October of 2021? I can't recall. I'd have to look at the, I'd have to yeah, look at the yeah, I would too. presentations. I think it sounds like, I think she's touched it, but I don't remember. Yeah. Go back and look at presentation titles. Yeah, me too. Let's see, um, but I hope people have come to terms with our priorities that considering formalization of the Sunday law, considering the seriousness of the impending conflict, the subject should absorb our attention. Not that we are to neglect understanding the external war, Russia, China, China uh, proxy wars, very important. But if you're still sexist, none of that information helps you. So we're going to stop. Uh, we're not going to go into the counterfeit now. I just want to say one thing. Oh. One thing only, we understand that this history of what was the mill rights was counterfeited in the history of World War I and World War II. So she's showing the, um, the mill right history between, um, it was counterfeited in the history of World War I and World War II. We understand that there was uh, William Miller and then Samuel Snow. We understand that William Miller rejected in those final testing days he rejected the message. We connect the leadership in this um, 1939 history to Pius XII, Hitler's Pope. And then this Miller Snow, um, this history was the history of slavery. And this 1980, um, this history was in the history of the Holocaust. So it was also the history of the Holocaust. So it was slavery and the history of the Holocaust, uh, racism, anti-Semitism, alpha history. So six commandments uh, for slavery, six commandments for the Holocaust. Uh, we intend to add Pius XI into this, this 1917 history, connecting him to the first angel of Miller, connecting Pius the 12th to uh, Snow. That's what I was thinking because she says we intend to add Pius XI. So it did come after October um, where she went back to this. It, I'm pretty sure based on what she just said right there. Okay. Okay. It shows, it shows Pius XI because we've always seen Pacelli as being um, marked at 1899, but she didn't make, she didn't, um, she made application of Pius, if that's the right way to say it, as the first angel. Um, and how Pacelli was the one that helped get him. Oh, I hope I said that right. It's been a while. Pacelli was instrumental in getting Pius XI as, or else it was vice versa. Um, Pius XI was 
the one that got that's probably, I think that's correct. Pius XI is the one that was instrumental in getting Pacelli to be Pius XII. Well, because Pacelli was um, his secretary, uh, whatever, his secretary. Right. Yeah. Right. So Pacelli's march back there in 1989, and that's when they were doing the Code of Canon Law and all mm -hmm. of that work. Right. But Pius, she went back in and showed Pius XI. And based on what you just read, then Pius XI was done. Yeah, scattering and gathering. That that was the presentation. Um, um, Pius XI was the the Pope during the time of Mussolini. Okay. And so the rise of fascism. Um, Pius XI plays a role in, and then you have um, Pius XII with Hitler. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. that, that ties things together. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so there's um, a famous book, Hitler's Pope, that will explain, explain uh, Pius XII. In 2014, another book was published called The Pope and Mussolini, The History of Pius XI, and his connection to fascism until 1939, so between here until Pope the 12th. On his deathbed, he rejected fascism. So I'm going to post a link on the media broadcast to a panel held by a university in the United States because this is one, uh, one well-researched book. This one, the Pope and Mussolini, is one well-researched book written after a thorough investigation in Rome of the Vatican archives and the fascist archives. There's a book panel at Brown University, the Watson Institute for International Studies, and some of the key points in the book are they discuss for the book are, are there, I think it's supposed to be, are there discussed for those that um, don't have it. So if you watch that panel discuss the book, it'll be simple in, and when um, it will be simple, and I don't think I did this sentence right, but when we do get to it, to just lay out the con Confederate um, counterfeit with a few more details, Pius XI with Mussolini, Pius XII with Hitler in the history of rampant fascism, Introduction complete. Okay, so she, now she's done with the introduction. And, um, oh, something went off. Okay, there. Um, this is a link to that YouTube panel that she's referring to right here. So she did put the link um, somewhere. I can't remember where I found it, but she did put that link in there. And so that's what I added. So um, if anybody has this document, uh, they'll be able to get to that. Okay, and then now she wants to, I, want, I wanted that introduction to be taken through Ted Wilson's sermon because I hope we see how serious it is that this LGBTQIA um, plus equaling Babylon is the model built by the church we love. I hope we have come to the point in our experience where we can see, where we see not just LGBTQIA plus equals Babylon. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay, I think I sped up. Um, I hope we have come to the point in our experience where we can see not just this, which is LGBTQIA plus equals Babylon, has a great deal of ignorance, not just that it entirely lacks empathy but also that it's prophetically indefensible. Did I spell it? Pious. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So apparently I spelled it wrong everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> apparently it's felt like this. Sorry about that. I'll have to fix that. Okay. Um, first of all, the biblical position he takes on these subjects, um, but second, how he connects them down through the papacy, issues that relate to the six commandments. If modern Babylon could be understood, then you need to see how they relate to the six commandments. Therefore, you cannot connect Babylon to this LGBT plus Q 
LGBTQIA plus community. And for a church that claims to stand on the word of God, I hope we can see that this isn't even the word of God, that even with his um, quotes, he can't do that, that the right methodology can open the whole thing up. And regardless of feelings, I think that is love. So what she's saying is that um, she's pointing this to this. So this LGBTQIA community, and she's pointing to the Holocaust when she's um, doing that. Because she wrote the six here to, to make us like see these are connected. And that she wanted to make it clear that LGBTQIA plus does not equal Babylon. Well, what is that? What is that? What do you guys think that means? Um, Jackie, what do you think that, what do you think she's saying, showing? She's describing the six, which is equality, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And that can't be applied. I'm saying that right. Yeah, the connection there. He says it doesn't even fit together. Correct? Why is she connecting the six to the Holocaust in LGBTQIA? Because they're they're not treated with equality. It's like, yeah, it's like they're treated as slaves. I'm just, yeah, I know it could go deeper. Hey, Rebecca, what do you think? Asking me? Yeah. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. she's definitely making a connection there right yeah what happened in the holocaust people were gathered up you know they were um and and executed yeah yes they were not um similar to them they, they thought them uh beneath them uh, that, uh the people that were executing thought they, they were better than the jews and we can see the lots of people e evangelicals um the the trans exclusionary radical feminist um think that they're better than the lgbtqia people they're trying to de dehumanize them. Yeah. I just wanted to get people's thoughts on that. Thanks. Sorry for the interruption. Um, it, it can it can get really dark. Yeah. I mean, it already is. I mean, people kill. Um, other like, kill LGBTQIA people every all the time, yeah. and nobody nobody bats an eye. Right. I still remember that case of the one that was in Montana. I think it was where they beat him and then tied him to the back of a truck and paraded him through town, just like right. awful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that was here in America. Right. That speaks for the character. And, and look at all the things that are happening now in, you know, with them, you know, don't say gay uh, in, what is that, in Florida and uh, other laws that are being passed about um, not being able to, you know, uh, talk about or, you know, help uh, transgender children. 
making that illegal or you know a, a calling it abuse yeah parents so they're they're working really hard at the at behind the scenes and and in front to to make this um just hell for people yeah it's sad so on the part of the holocaust uh the jews we're talking about right Yes. That was the Holocaust. I mean, they were treated worse than, an, well, I say animals. Animals were treated better than they were. Right. They were like just filthy. Don't even, don't even uh, touch them. Don't even go near them. And you can see the same thing happening with uh, LGBT too as well they're they're worse than it they're just the lowest of the low and they're you know the jews and the lgbtqia community are not the only ones that have experienced this it's not in our country <laughs> yeah any other comments? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, hi, Phil. Hi. Yeah, so um, in the Holocaust, you know, anyone who didn't fit into that perfect hu human species as the, um, the German race, you know, mostly Jews, they were all, you know, they were considered you know, the lowest of the, the lowest right so they were and so they were beneath human human species so they all got executed so there's the six and then you got the six lgbtqia plus people um are considered uh so low that even the um the radical feminist, uh, exclusionary, exclus exclusionary feminist, uh, don't want them in, any part in, in their movement. Um, so they're, again, the LGBTQIA is the lowest of the low. And connecting the six and six, uh, they, they too, and anybody who stands with the LGBTQIA plus will also receive the same treatment that they receive. So, so we think we're talking about the lowest of the lows, the, the bottom of the barrel. And who came, who came to this world at the bottom of the barrel? Jesus. It Jesus, was our savior. Our savior. So, you know, when 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 we see that 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 our savior came as the the lowest of the low, as a as slave to all humanity. You know, we who choose to stand with the lowest of the low are in good company. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll go ahead and read her uh, prayer. She says, um, can you with me? We'll close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that you are love. May we see your love in your messages that while change is painful, often even freedom is painful, that our time on this earth is a war, we can still see your loving kindness. I pray that as we reach the formalization of the Sunday law, through looking at this subject closely, carefully, we'll understand better the extent of sin and we'll hate it and turn away from it. However much it hurts, please make our eyes see. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.
And then um, I added this in here. Oh, okay, because um, she was talking about the book on the Mussolini, uh, the Pope on Mussolini, and this is just um, additional information on that panel. Okay, all right. So now it's Phil. Okay, so let's see. 